Okay, today we're going to look at number eight on our faith storyboard. This is the sacrifice that Jesus uh, paid for us on the cross. So Jesus came to earth to be a sacrifice for our sins. His daily communion with his Father enabled him to rely fully on God for instructions. He never decided what he wanted to do. He always said, what, you know, he always prayed to the Father, not my will, but thy will. Not my will, but thy will. So he always wanted to ask for instructions from God the Father. So even the night before his crucifixion, Jesus asked the Father to free him from the coming pain and suffering. But he said, but nevertheless, thy will be done. So he pleaded with him. He, this, the, the suffering that he, he saw that was going to happen was so much that having the sins of the world on him, he pleaded with the Father, if possible, you know, take this away. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. So Jesus faithfully did what the Father wanted him to do, fully trusting God to see the salvation plan through to the end. So let's look at a couple of Bible texts that go along with this. First one is in Luke 22, verse 42, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Then in Acts 2, verse 32, we read, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. So God had, uh, Jesus had faith in God. And did God let him down? No, he didn't. He raised him up on Sunday morning. Hebrews 5.8, we read, Though he were a son of God, he learned, uh, yet he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. So he learned to obey God and trust God. In Luke 23, verse 46, we read, And Jesus called out, you know, with a loud voice, Father, unto thy, your hands I entrust my spirit, saying, saying this, he breathed his last breath. So, even in death, Jesus trusted his Father that he would follow through and complete the plan of redemption, which he did. He raised them on, on uh, Sunday morning, resurrection morning. Okay, let's take a look at number nine on our uh, faith storyboard. And this, was a, this one is an interesting one. It says, Our faith will be tested during the Great Tribulation. Now, up to this point in our uh, studies on faith, they've all been in the past. Have you noticed? They're all, all the various people in the past. Now we're looking to the future here. And this is going to happen during the Great Tribulation. Just as the faith of countless martyrs have been tested in the past, and we, we kind of looked at some of these here, so every Christian will have their faith tested during the Great Tribulation. And there's an interesting um, a comment in the Bible. It says, when you are afraid, when we are afraid for our life, it may be convenient to compromise. Sure would. If we could find a way out to save our life, we're going to do it. But Jesus cautioned us. He said that not to be afraid of them that can kill the body, only those that can kill the body and the soul. So during the 1,335 days of the coming Great Tribulation, we will all be tested. Some of us will uh, die as martyrs. 
that may be a, a new thought for some of you. You might think that during the, the, the upcoming tribulations that God will protect all of us. Well, it's not how it works out. So, but God says to those whose faith remains steadfast to Jesus, to the end, he has a promise for us that we'll get a crown of life in heaven. So let's look at a couple texts on this here. First one is in James 1, verse 12. It says, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. I like that promise. In Daniel 12.12 12, in the Old Testament. And I'll cover this in more te detail in other storyboards. But it says, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the end of the 1335 days. Why are they going to be blessed? Because we're going to be caught up into the air and we're going to go with Jesus to heaven. Revelation 11 verse 18. And it says, The nations were angry, and thy gods, that God's wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. So there's coming a day ahead where God's wrath will be released. And the judgment will come to both the, the saints and the sinners. And there's a, another good text in Revelation 13, verse 10. It says, if anyone is to go into captivity, now this is, ex this is targeted right to, to the Great Tribulation. So the folks that are going through the Great Tribulation, this 1,335 days, this is a text just for you. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity, will uh, they will go. If every, anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword, they will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. So God is telling us that some of you may be killed by the sword, some of you may go into captivity, and this is going to be hard, this is going to be stressful, but I'm in control. Be patient and endure through this, and I'm going to give you the crown of life when I come, and you're going to have eternal life. So if we, are, if we were to die, during this great tribulation, this is not an issue with God. He can easily resurrect us.